everyone, it's Latin Roses. Today I'm going to bring to you another great love story. Please note that sometimes it is challenging to find a quiet location to shoot. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I just have to make the most of where I can find a place to shoot these videos for you. And I was having a little more difficulty with my tripod today also. So if you see a little bit of shaking in the video, just try to ignore that and pay attention to what is being said because it is a really beautiful story. So without further ado, I bring you love story number four, the story of Eric and Celeste. Hi everyone, it's Latin Roses. Today I'm here with uh, Eric. We have another great love story for you today. And today we're going to hear love story number four of Eric and Celeste. Hi Eric. Hi, how are you, how's everyone doing? Um, how did you meet your beautiful wife Celeste? Well, it's a pretty, I guess it's a pretty good story. To me, it's a, it's a, uh, a great story. In uh, August 27th of 1995 at uh, 3.30 p.m. I met uh, the, my little lady. I was in uh, Riverside off of uh, uh, Riverside down by the old uh, historical district. We're in Southern California. In Southern California, yeah. 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 And um, we, I was uh, sitting on the steps of, uh, of a friend's house uh, waiting to do the dishes because whenever my car ran out of gas and I didn't have a place to stay, if I cleaned up the house, I could uh, stay there uh, for free. Anyhow, oh. so I was sitting on the uh, third step of uh, uh, Sabrina's house and uh, this little uh, lady uh, knocked on the door and I peeked around the corner and all I seen were legs and hair and uh, I said oh she's she's not home right now uh, I said but she'll be back later and uh, she said, oh, okay and she uh, she went out uh, she went down the steps and out to her car I said wow that was some gal anyhow so uh, I didn't uh, do anything because I was kind of a loser and, what? Uh, and <laughs> not you. Uh, so, but ironically, she came back up uh, and said, "Hey, if you're if you want to wait at my house, uh, you're more than welcome to. I'm waiting for her also." Uh -huh. And um, so I said, "Yeah." So I went, <laughs> uh, got in the car uh, with, uh, and there was a gentleman in there named Steve, who was her boyfriend actually at the time. Her boyfriend? Yeah. Okay. I know. <laughs> and uh, we went back to her her house. And uh, we we chilled and got to know each other. We were busy people back then. Now this was 22 years ago, and uh, we uh, we would later go up to meet with Sabrina and everything. And uh, so I got to know uh, Celeste. And uh, come 72 hours later, I said, "Man, this this girl is uh, something special." I said, "This is uh, I've never really had a girlfriend." Uh, but one before then, it was uh, just a, after I'd been out of the Gulf War and everything. So you knew right away she was something special? Well, I knew. I just knew that she you was... You just knew? I just knew something. Uh, but who... Why is some uh, beautiful girl going to be interested in me? I Aww. don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, so anyhow, so 72 hours had passed. And I remember we were just kind of chilling around and uh, getting to know Steve a little bit. And uh, here's where the rubber kind of met the road, was that um, I remember rent was due in nine days. And uh, we were, Steve, uh, we were looking in the newspaper uh, for uh, want ads. And he finally found a place out in, uh, for the Ramona Expressway. It was like 25 miles away for some some sales job or something and we went out there he got dressed up in a, in a tie and everything and I remember I was in this crappy old uh, 94 blue Geo Metro with uh, one working door uh, and every time he hit a speed bump the back the back uh, trunk lid would do doom doom and anyhow <laughs> so um, so we got to the we drove out to the spot and um, and I had uh, looked in the mirrors back when I smoked. Uh, 
uh, cigarettes and I lit up a cigarette, a camel wide light, mm -hmm. and I took like three drags off it and I looked in the mirror and there was that dude coming back to the car. I said, huh. So uh, I, uh, he got into the car and I uh, said, he, he sat down in the seat, just like this. He sat down in the seat and said, man, I can't do that. I can't do this. And uh, I said, huh. I said, and I didn't say anything, but inside <laughs> my brain I said, well, I'd be willing to do anything for that little lady. Aww. So I, we proceeded to drive home and uh, we drove up to the apartment complex. I said, T you tell Celeste I'll be back later. Mm -hmm. As if she was worried about me. <laughs> but I, um, I, um, I went to uh, all the surrounding car washes. And by the end of the day, I went to Canyon Crest Car Wash, which is pretty local. Mm -hmm. And but I know they hire I, they hire uh, duds like me who don't have jobs <laughs> and don't have anything to really offer. I see. And uh, so I remember a Cedra uh, said no no jobs for you. And I remember uh, I said and so I walked away. Of course I accepted this and I uh, went and I as I was walking away I said man this. This uh, parking lot looks like crap. Why would you want to get a, a car washed here? So anyhow, so I seen a, a broom and uh, and a little dustpan. I just started sweeping up. I just started sweeping up the parking lot and um, and all the cigarette butts and all the plastic cans and papers and everything. And I finished the day at five o'clock and I came back the next morning at eight o'clock, 7.58. And I started sweeping up that whole parking lot, which was ginormous. And uh, and I swept the whole day. And I remember the guys in the vacuum, the Hispanic uh, gentleman, on the at the vacuums were looking at me like, oh, oh, oh Gamacho, a loco, sweep the whole parking lot. Oh. Wow, wow. And we were there, they were <clears> laughing at me. But they were sitting and they weren't doing anything. I thought to myself, I said, I'm going to do everything I can. Uh, to get a job, I will do anything to get a job. And uh, Steve's uh, words, I can't do this, echoed in my brain. I said, I will do any, whatever it takes. Wow, you were really into her. And I, mm -hmm. uh, so by the end, five o'clock came, 4.58 mm -hmm. came around, and uh, Isidro came up to me and said, Gabacho, you is a loco, loco uh, amigo. Is a, your gringo is a loco. I don't, but <laughs> you know what? this parking lot has never looked better <laughs> and those those I won't use the word thank you those guys <laughs> over there are doing nothing mm. and it said you come back tomorrow at 8 o'clock you got a job wow it said uh, so I you still get a little emotional thinking about it huh mm -hmm. so I drove back to the apartment and I told uh, Celeste and Steve that I got a job. And Steve was in the other room watching TV, PBS, because there was only one channel oh. available. Yeah, I've been us. there. <laughs> and uh, I said, hey, man, I got, uh, I got a job. I said, and I don't need the money. I said, you can have every, every bit of money minus one beer and one pack of cigarettes uh, a day. You can have all my money. I said, uh, I got feelings for you and I'm willing to, uh, I will promise you this, is that I will give you everything I got. Mm -hmm. Wow. And she said, said I feel the same way. Aww. I said, can I, um, can I take care of Steve? And she said, do it do whatever it takes I don't know how you're gonna do it but do whatever it takes you didn't mean murder him did you <laughs> no no okay no I, so I I told Steve there was a phone call I needed um to make uh, across the street at Alpha Beta that's how long ago it was mm -hmm. and um I said go make this phone call and he left and uh we're both prior service so he had a rucksack so I packed up his bags and by the time he came back, I just locked the door. I said, and I just motioned in the uh, the window. I said, 
Well, that's I. It said, we're going to say goodbye to you. And he, he flipped out. He did the thing. Cops were called. They came up, asked him if he was paying rent. And um, and the answer was no. So he exited, and uh, and I got the girl. And, wow. Uh, but um, it would be all cool and everything uh, if, if that were the end of the story. But it's really not. Mm. What happened was is, uh, I ended up... Uh, fighting about 23 guys guys that were still enamored by this little lady Wow! Um, to uh, get the street knocked off her because mm. she had lived on the streets for a couple years mm -hmm. and um, and uh, she was beaten daily by a guy named Dave Wow! and uh, and her grandma, great grandmother pulled her off the streets and said I can't believe I see what I see I said, but you know, I will get you into this apartment that you're in right now. Mm. That was one and a half months earlier. Mm -hmm. If you stop seeing that guy, okay. that guy would later, that guy would later show up at the front door and say, he'd, say, he'd drop off little like uh, 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 clues that he was near. Mm -hmm. and he knocked on the door. He said, hey, a little, a little squirmy dude. He said, hey, Celeste here. I said, huh. I was in my boxers. And I, had, I was in a neighborhood <laughs> where, I, where I had two holes in every one of my boxers. And that was to carry a knife because you didn't go anywhere uh, outside the door without a weapon. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, huh. I said, you're Dave, you're Dave aren't you? He said, yeah, that's me. So I'll be right back. So I, I, went, I went back and I thought for a second, I went, huh. Nah, I'm just... Yeah, so I opened up the sling gun, started with the pow! I, I hit that little guy, wow. he, went, he went shh, right back, he went shh, out into the quad. <laughs> I remember, I, he, you can always tell a guy who's been hit uh, before because they're very hard, very hard to uh, to uh, pin down. But I, I did not, I brushed up against him, I just remember chasing him down the street in my boxers, uh, down past the parking lot, I said, I said, don't come back. Etc. Etc. And so it just loud it, and I never seen that guy again for the rest of my life. And that girl has been uh, safe and protected. And uh, to kind of allude to the end of the story, mm -hmm. I will say that I remember around 2006, we were in our first home after a year, and we almost didn't make it. And I remember uh, down uh, in the backyard, right by the basement, I said, "Well, said, why are you even?" Why are you even with me? Uh, why do you even stick around? She said. Said she said, because I knew you could get me out of there. She had been through seventeen Aww. foster homes, and uh, with a a mom who is just clinically bananas. Wow. She said, I knew you could get me out of there. Ah. And uh, to the the finish of the story, is that. Uh, today we just bought a house that will close on August 10th which is about 13 days away Wow that's 12 amazing. hours in 15 minutes that's away amazing. from closing that I will get my family into a neighborhood where there are nine star schools for my four-year-old wow daughter and central air and heat a wow. dishwasher in a second bathroom and uh, my job has been done so you come really far from where you started yeah. with your lady yeah and so the uh, the end goal is always been in mind and that's to be with and that's to look past everything and that's to be with my with my girl and my kids sucking on a uh, dr. pepper with a little <laughs> umbrella under uh, under the sunlight uh, at the beach as close as I can get and we are moving uh, we, we made it we wow made it. that is a beautiful story I think it's probably one of the most beautiful stories I've ever heard honestly we cleaned up we, we uh, fly right and uh, yep she's still um, she's still the most beautiful lady uh, in my life Aww. and um, it's a wonderful uh it's a wonderful gal. So beautiful. Thank yeah. you so much, Eric, for Very sharing bad. that. Okay, so as you could tell, that was such a beautiful love story. I really loved that one. It was so moving. 
and it was moving for the for Eric so I think that's really really sweet uh, what I want to tell you ladies especially is there's seven billion people on the planet so if a man's not treating you right you need to move on I mean as you can hear from that story if a man really wants you he'll do whatever it takes to get you literally and just know your self-worth okay there's a man out there with your name on him so don't worry about that ladies do what's right for you now I'm going to show you some pictures of Eric and Celeste and the beautiful family and thank you for tuning in and as always I wish you love peace and joy